When it comes to tracking the ball, no one does it quite like Roger Federer. And in this lesson, I want to help you to become a better tennis player by being able to track that ball properly onto the sweet spot and ultimately hit the ball much cleaner. Now with Federer, he does something very unique. He turns his head right to that point of contact and he holds it there for a split second. This allows him to track the ball using both eyes. So let's get out on court and see how this can help your game. Now a lot of us will actually look up as we make contact. So we're making contact and instead of our eyes being zoned in on that target, which is the ball, we actually start looking at where we're trying to aim or we're looking at the opponent. Now this will destroy that timing. So as the ball is bouncing, really focus on seeing the ball rise up until it actually makes contact with your racket. So you might not see the actual contact point because it happens so quick. What we can focus on is the ball rising up to the strings and the ball then coming off the strings. And a very simple way for you to do this is to make sure that your head is now turning so that both eyes can see that point of contact. So by turning the head, you're able to use both the non-dominant and the dominant eye to track that ball properly. Now, of course, the contact point happens so quickly, it's almost physically impossible to see the blur of the actual ball making contact with your strings. But what we want to do, and what tracking the ball properly actually means, is seeing the ball come off your opponent's strings. This will help you to actually get into the right position much quicker. You'll be able to prepare much faster, and this creates time. And time, of course, is the essence of good tennis. Then we want to track the ball as it passes over the net, as it bounces on our side, and as it rises up towards our racket. And where a lot of players go wrong is they move the head just before that point of contact. They lift their head and they look either towards their opponent or towards their intended target. And this will do nothing but destroy your timing and destroy the quality of your shot. And this is exactly why Federer keeps his head very still till long after the ball has left his racket. This ensures that balance in the head and this ensures that he has the best possible chance of hitting that ball as cleanly as he can. Of course he will still shank the ball, of course he still hits the ball off the edges of the racket, but it's giving his body the best possible chance to hit the ball cleanly. If I don't turn the head, only the right eye will be able to see that point of contact. But by turning the head now, I can see the ball rising up to the strings and then coming off with both eyes. It's almost like a triangle. Both eyes and the racket face equal a triangle. And I want to make sure that I have that triangle when I'm making contact. Now you don't have to hold it like a Federer, but you can still see that point of contact and then lift up. Now in this clip, you can see that Federer is joking around and laughing, but he's still maintaining that fundamental of tracking the ball onto the strings. You can see he's smiling, he's laughing about something, but he's still maintaining that tracking of the ball. He does the same on this shot, and this shows you that it's just ingrained, he's made it such a big habit that it's almost impossible for him to actually lift his head or not watch the ball onto the string bed. So if you're someone who's struggling with their timing, or if you have really good days and some really bad days, maybe tracking the ball much better will help you have a more consistent tennis game and a more consistent uh, sweet spot on the racket. This is one of the most important elements in tennis and it's something that often is overlooked by a lot of club players and even professional players and that's why Federer is the best player to actually watch and learn from when it comes to tracking a ball. He is someone who you will never see lifting the head or very rarely lifting the head and we see how focused he is on seeing that ball rising up to his racket and coming off. And this is great for anyone who is coaching juniors or is a junior player themselves. This is something that you can be working on from a young age and this will help your tennis massively. If you've enjoyed this lesson, please click that like button and see you soon. All the best, Simon.